Hey, hey people, and today I have decided to make a rigging overview tutorial because I often get jobs where I have to clean up someone else's rig, so I decided to make a little video so that um, I get cleaner rigs to fix, because otherwise usually I get a rig and then I have to start doing everything from the beginning because it's not usable. But with this overview, maybe people make better rigs and then I can just fix problems in them as they arise instead of having to work from the beginning. So the first thing you'll notice here is I have layers and stuff. So when you make a rig, don't forget about layers. It's important. I'll go over that in more detail later, but you'll see the little colored squares. If you're wondering what they are, they are layers. So the first thing you'll see is that I have my controllers, which are these colored things, which is geometry, by the way, because geometry doesn't lag the viewport as much and it's easier to click on. Because if you notice, when you click on the spline, sometimes you'll have a jumpy selection. But here, you always hit the geometry, and well, most of the times you hit the right thing. Also, don't forget to lock your environment layer because that's gets clicked a lot while animating. So you'll see I have controllers, joints, and then the mesh, and I have accessories, which is also mesh stuff. But I'll go over that later. So and splitting things up like this means that like if you see my joints I only have constraint tags and these expresso tags which are basically just for disabling and enabling all of them at once it's just a set driven controller not so important you can ignore the expresso tags they don't have anything in them they just have a, a hookup of this PSR so the point is that my con I can uh, I don't have IK tags, I don't have IK chains, I don't have any of these dependencies on these joints. These joints are all just PSR constraint to their respective controllers. So they're all PSR constraint to controllers. This means that if I, if my controller is messing up, if my rig isn't working, I can just delete that part of the rig while the joints are still there and the joints don't, because the joints, I don't want to repaint them, I don't want to realize that I moved the joints in the wrong place. All my joints ha have frozen coordinates. So if I, even if I delete all my controllers in my coordinates, I can zero them all out and they'll be in the right place. And I won't lose any of my weighting work, any of my weights. So after I do this, after I have my, uh, so basically I have a controller for each joint. And then later on top of them is where I build my IK chains and dependencies and whatnot. And you know, I add little nulls and stuff here and there so that I can, you know, do the whole uh, reverse IK for the foot, and all this stuff happens on these controllers. The joints remain clean, so that if I have a problem with the rig, or if I have a problem with something, it's very easy for me to rebuild just part of a rig. I can, for example, go ahead and like, where are my joints? Uh, my joints. Let's make them display. If I have to rebuild some part of my rig here, I can just delete that. I delete the arm and the IK of that, and I still have all, the, and all the joints are still there. Like I just got rid of all the controls if I'm like, this is not working at all. I just delete all the controllers, and I still have all my joints, they hold the, all the weights, and they're all in the right place. I didn't mess any of that up. Very important. Like you don't want to put all your IKs and stuff and nulls and, uh, you know, pole vectors and everything into the joints, because when you have to fix things and things in rigs always break, you can't do that. Uh, the order is important here as well because you move the controllers, the controllers move the joints and the joints move the mesh. So this is the order that you have to have them in. If you have them in the wrong order, you get lots of priority issues and things move around incorrectly. Like they will lag behind each other and it's a whole clusterfuck. Next, what is my next feature? Accessories, yes, this is how I attach things to things. For example, I have this right hand stuff, null, which is PSR constrained to my right hand joint. Oops. You can see here, right hand joint. So wherever that joint, even if I delete all my controllers, wherever that joint goes, this hand stuff goes there. And then inside this null, I can place things. I can place my right hand fingers. I can place other objects. I can, I can place a cube in there. Let's zero out the PSR here. Why is it not zeroing out the PSR? Our right hand stuff, that's why. There you go. I can scale it down, I can move it here. And now when I move, there you go, it's already in there. As you can see, it sticks to the joint, not the controller. 
because the controller can move further away but it sticks to where the joint is and it'll rotate so that's important to keep so i have a head stuff a hand stuff left hand right hand i have a wing stuff which is tied to the neck um, this is a five-man head a separate custom object you can also put eyes in here and constrain them as you see fit but basically this is the point that you shouldn't if you want to attach an object to your rig you shouldn't just drop it into the controllers why not because for example right now i can middle click my controllers and i can keyframe them all if you have other stuff in here like you know cubes and accessories those things will get keyframed and then your scene will just have a whole bunch of keyframes that you do not need but here you just middle click your controllers key press hit keyframe and all your controllers are keyframed um, very convenient so keep this stuff separate what do we have next um, yes make sure you use the PSR constraints not the parent constraints these are way more effective and predictable and I think that's mostly the important stuff I want to cover so there you go you got a six minute overview of how to make a rig like this keep stuff compartmentalized it's very important ah yeah layers that's right you'll notice that also have stuff on layers um, I have a layer for controllers for the mesh for accessories so for the controllers for example if I hit render you won't see them because they are hidden with layers I have your layer disabled uh, the joints again you can just disable them in the viewport same thing with the mesh you can lock it so you can't select it so you don't accidentally click on it very convenient um, also accessories basically you can lock and unlock things you can hide things as you see fit and everything is in layers very handy to have that yeah and I think that's the main overview of rigging that I wanted to cover because these are pretty common mistakes I see them all the time and just this simple co compartmentalization having things in modules keeping your controllers separate from your joints having everything on layers just makes your life so much easier and everything so much more organized um, yeah also a bonus tip layers work for materials too so if you notice sample here I have layers called head stuff environment materials um, which aren't actually applied to any objects they're just here I have head mesh environment materials because you can drag materials onto layers as well and then you can sort them well this clearly needs more sorting but it's accessories I think my body materials here are separately so anything I can apply to the body is here so also it makes it easier to find things once again very useful techniques very efficient practice them in New York and you will save yourself time when you need to fix things so this is Alexei from Ace5 Studios I hope this was helpful go check out my website for more tutorials you can buy the 5 man there and the 5J pack and all kinds of handy free stuff too Cheers.